In this chapter, we're going to learn a very important skill for any developer. We're going to see how we can ask interesting questions to our database. As you've seen before, executing CRUD operations against a database is fairly straightforward and it can get a little bit more complicated to create complex relationships as you've seen in the one-to-many and many-to-many situations. Now querying a database so we can generate reports is a key aspect of any business. This is what we call data analysis and a lot of the decision making in a business will rely on this data. This is the type of data that will help a business to monitor its performance. So to keep it very simple for now, all we want to do is to generate a monthly report and that will contain the amount of products sold and the total income from these sales. And in the end, I'll challenge you to create your own reports based on the knowledge gained in this lesson. So to speed things up, let's seed data related to our orders. In the video description below, you can find a link to a file with all the seed data and you have to copy all the has data calls in relation to the categories, products, order products and orders and replace what you have now. This will contain information about orders with different dates placed in different months and different years so that we can generate a report based on sales per month. But before continuing, let's have a look at how we can see the SQL queries generated by Entity Framework. We're going to add some extra middleware on our on configuring method. So using our options builder right after the use SQLite call, we're going to add a call to the method enable sensitive data logging. Next, we're going to add some code so that this data is logged onto the console every time we execute a command against the database. So we're going to call a method called use logger factory, passing the result of calling this method get logger factory. So let's create this method and you can either write the code yourself or copy and paste from the file in the descriptions below. Once you call this create method in the logger factory, you need to bring in a new package. Microsoft extensions logging console. And once that's done, you can call the add console method in the builder that we are passing to the create method. If you don't have a lot of experience with C Sharp, this might look a little bit complicated, but what's happening inside this create call in the logger factory is we are using this builder parameter, which is a callback function, and it allows us to configure the logger factory. So the add console method outputs the log into the console and the add filter lets us specify what data we want to be logged and in our case we only want to display the database commands so you don't need to understand this get logger factory at the moment but of course it doesn't hurt to know more about middleware and callback functions and these more advanced topics in c-sharp so feel free to ask questions, explore this code and hover over any keyword that you don't know. And of course, always feel free to ask questions in the comments below. And we will also go to the user interface and comment out all the console.clear calls so that we can visualize our logging. And then let's run the app and see what happens. As soon as it runs, we can see the commands related to creating the tables and inserting the seed data. And then for each operation, we can see the corresponding command. Here we selected the products and here we can see a command to get all orders. We can see all the tables being joined, which happens when we call the include method in our controller. We always have to remember that entity framework it's a mapper that works on top of SQL. So it's important not only to visualize the actual SQL queries that we are generating, but also it's very, very important to know SQL really well. But now let's create a new service 
and that's going to be the report service. And of course, let's tidy up our class and then let's create a method where the logic to generate our report will live. And the first thing we need to do is to get all the orders from the database and we'll do that calling the get orders method in the order controller. Now the report that I want will have a different data structure. We're going to have each row representing one month. So we're going to group that data by the month. So have a look at the links below so you can understand what the group by method does. And the way we do it using link is we say that we're going to group by a new object and this will be an anonymous object. That's why we say new without any name. And in this case, we are using the month that is contained in the create date. So it's a property of our date time object, which is our created date. And once our data is grouped by month, then we can select from it. And for each one of these months, we're going to have a new row and the columns for each row will be represented in this monthly report DTO object that I'm going to create. And you don't need to create a new custom type as I'm doing. You can keep this object anonymous, but I just love creating objects for data representation just to keep everything tidy and organized in my application and you can quickly visualize what this data is about. So let's create this monthly report TTO. And essentially what I want to show in this report is the corresponding month total price, which is the total income in that month and the total quantity of products purchased. Then we can populate this monthly report with the data from the groupings. Whenever you call this group by method, the result is an I grouping and that's an interface that represents a collection of objects that share a key. In our case, the key is the month and the elements associated with that key are all the months contained in the table. So we are using that key to populate the month in the monthly report DTO. But I want to grab the full month's name and since the month comes as an integer, I need to do some processing and I'm using the get month name method, which is part of the culture info namespace. Then for the total price, I need to sum the total prices of each order. And for the total quantity, I need to sum the sum of quantities in each order product in each order. And of course, I need a list of monthly report ETOs. So we have to call the to list method. Then I need to pass this list into the show report by month method. So I've created it in the user interface class and I'm pasting the code that I had already prepared. It's very similar to the previous tables we have created. Then I need to create a new option in the main menu options enum and make the corresponding changes in the user interface class. So let's see what happens when we try to generate a report. And we can see that we have data per month, but there's something not quite right. When seeding the orders table, I've created records across different years. But at the moment, the data is being grouped by month, regardless of the year that month belongs to. So if I have records in July 2020, 22 and July 2023, it just gets recorded as July. So what we need to do is to group by month and year. And when populating the monthly report ETO, I'm going to use string interpolation to concatenate the month and the year into a string. And with that, let's run the app again and try to generate a report. And that looks much better. We have different months in different years. And now as a challenge, I suggest you create a reports submenu 
where you can let the users choose what type of report they want to generate. It could be by month, by week, by year, and if you want something more advanced and difficult, try to break down how much of each category was sold per month or per any period of time. So that's it for this entity framework for beginners tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to join our community on Discord if you haven't yet and check our website out where we have a complete roadmap and where you can submit your code to get reviewed. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.